Japanese swords are granted as a symbol of the status and authority of the top rank sumo wrestlers. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Sumo, the Japanese national sport that has 1,500 years of history. Although you might have heard or seen it somewhere before, because it's full of special culture, I believe you have a lot of questions about it. When did it start? Why did they do it? And what is up with the wrestler's fashion? Because a lot of young Japanese don't know about these things either. It's sad to see that in foreign movies and such, they are depicted as just fat people bouncing their bodies against each other. So today, I will explain about the 1,500 years of sumo history by breaking it into three points. In the end of the video, I will also talk about three reasons why we call the sumo wrestlers the modern samurai. Even if you get confused somewhere during the story, that's okay. I will wrap everything up again at the end of the video and today's conclusion. So let's go to The sumo today is known as a kind of sport, but it was originally a Shinto ritual to foresee the harvest of agricultural products throughout the year. Sumo originates from myths of gods comparing their powers, which is described in Japan's oldest history books, Hojiki and Nihon Shoki. From the Nara period to the Heian period, sumo became enjoyed throughout the year in the imperial court to pray for a rich harvest and peace. Sumo as a court event enjoyed by aristocrats lasted for about 300 years. Coming into the Kamakura to the Sengoku period, the Shonen eras, Sumo also became a way for the samurai to train for combat. Minamoto no Yoritomo, the founder of the first shogunate, loved Sumo. And he started the culture of holding Sumo games for the emperor and the shogun to watch. The famous Oda Nobunaga, the first samurai of the three heroes in the Sengoku era, was also a big fan of sumo. Oda Nobunaga is a name that always comes out when it comes to cultural history in Japan. There are historical records of him even holding a large-scale sumo game at Azuchi Castle with 1,500 wrestlers fighting each other. He hired strong sumo wrestlers as his subordinates. So more and more samurai began to train in sumo in order to become a higher rank warrior. So in the samurai era, sumo became less of an entertainment for the aristocrats, but more of a way for physical training for the samurai. This is how the culture of sumo became a fusion of a Shinto ritual and the samurai code. Coming into the peaceful Edo period after the long war era, there were no wars for more than 200 years. The samurai did not have to show off their powers to the warlords anymore. So sumo returned to the kind of entertainment which it once was, only this time for the public to watch. That being, professional sumo wrestlers began to show up. Sumo became one of the most popular entertainment for the public. Along with kabuki, the traditional stage art, a sumo wrestler was thought of as a glamorous job admired by the people, just like the kabuki actors. If you thought, what the heck is kabuki? You can take a look at this video to find out. The sumo we see today is almost exactly the same as it was, enjoyed in the Edo period. From its history, I can tell you have already understood the deep relationship between sumo and samurai. I would like to introduce the three traditions that still exist today, 
which show that originally comes from samurai culture. 1. Their honor. 2. The Tachi and Tanto. 3. Their hairstyle. 1. Their honor. The rank system of the sumo wrestlers was established in the 1650s during the Edo period. The top rank is called Yokozuna, but there is a lot more required to become one than just winning games. There is a Yokozuna council that decides whether that sumo wrestler is worthy of becoming one by looking at his attitude, dignity, and honor. If a Yokozuna has a bad attitude or behavior, whether in training or at games, he will be warned by the council and sometimes be criticized by the people. In order to be the one at the highest rank of Japan's national sport, he must always be a man of virtue. So in sumo, the winner will never clench his fist in triumph as a way to show respect to his opponent. This goes for other sports, such as judo and kendo too. Just like the samurai in the past, honor and pride is important for the sumo wrestlers as well. 2. The Tachi and Tanto The top rank of the sumo wrestlers, the Yokozuna, will have two servants with him when he enters the Doyo battle arena. One of his servants will be carrying his tachi, a katana. But why do you need a sword you're not going to use? This is because in the Edo period, some of the powerful sumo wrestlers were hired by the daimyo and were given the top class status of a samurai. Which means these sumo wrestlers were privileged to carry katana swords like the samurai. So even today, Japanese swords are granted as a symbol of the status and authority of the top rank sumo wrestlers. And a small piece of information, there's actually one more person in the sumo world who is allowed to carry a katana. It is the gyoji, the sumo referee. The sumo referees actually have ranks too. And the top rank gyoji, called the tate gyoji, are allowed to carry a tanto, a short katana, on his left waist. But they carry the katana for a different reason. It is to show that if they ever make a mistake as a top rank referee, they are ready to commit harakiri, which means they are ready to die anytime to take responsibility. In real life, none of these referees has actually committed harakiri before but it is a symbol of their pride and honor too. 3. Their hairstyle One last thing that these sumo wrestlers and samurai have in common is their hairstyle. Why do they have that patch of hair on the top of their heads? The hairstyle is called chonmage, a hairstyle that was originally done by the aristocrats and the samurai from the Heian era. The patch of hair was meant to function as a cushion between your head and the armor helmet for the samurai who fought in war. In the peaceful Edo period, there were no wars, but the hairstyle culture continued as a way to show that you are a noble warrior who is ready to go and die in battle at any time. Today, sumo wrestlers are the only people who inherit this hairstyle culture. Then lastly, today's conclusion. The history of sumo can be broken down into three points. 1. A Shinto ritual. The origin of sumo is written in Japan's oldest history book, Hojiki and Nihonshoki. It was an imperial court event to wish for a rich harvest and peace, which lasted for 300 years. 2. Combat training for samurai. In the samurai eras from the Kamakura to the Sengoku period, sumo became a way for samurai to train physically. Powerful samurai leaders like Minamoto no Yoritomo and Oda Nobunaga started the culture of holding sumo games for them to enjoy watching. Samurai who were strong in sumo 
were hired as subordinates by these powerful people. 3. Entertainment for the public In the peaceful Edo period, sumo became one of the top two popular entertainment for the public, along with kabuki. The sumo games we see today are exactly the same from this era. There are mainly three characteristics of sumo that are related to samurai culture. 1. Their honor. The sumo wrestlers must live with honor and pride and will be warned for bad behavior. 2. The tachi and tanto. The top rank sumo wrestlers and sumo referees carry katana swords as a symbol of authority. 3. Their hairstyle. The sumo wrestlers must have the chonmage hairstyle, which was meant to express the samurai's readiness to die in battle anytime. These are the reasons why they are called the modern samurai. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understandings towards sumo history and culture, please hit the like button to let me know. And my goal is to achieve 100,000 subscribers by January 2022, so your help is what I need. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. どうも、ありがとうございました。Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching this video and welcome to the Omake Talk. For those of you who've been waiting for videos about sumo, I'm very sorry to keep you waiting. This is it. Yes, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed. So originally, when I started making this video, I was, I was thinking that I would probably make like one video about sumo and that'd be it. But as I was writing the script and as I was studying about sumo history and culture, I found out a lot of things that I didn't know before myself. And the more I studied about it, the more I started to find it was really fun to learn about. And I think in the near future, I'm probably going to be making like maybe two or three more videos just about sumo, actually. Uh, for example, I would like to talk about if you ever watched sumo before, there's a lot of um strange moves that the sumo wrestlers do, you know, if you don't know what they're doing. Like, um, they would be throwing, like, for example, salt in the air. Um, after they win, they kind of move their hands and then take take this small package from someone, right? Like, these, all of these things all have coarse meanings to them. And I'd love to make videos talking about what they're doing. And at the same time, while I made these videos, I really thought that it's sad that a lot of Japanese, young Japanese people, like myself too, um, are kind of, you know, not interested in sumo anymore. The, in Japan, the common idea of a person wa watching sumo or enjoying sumo is usually an elderly, so... Like myself, when I was growing up, I did not like watch sumo on my own will. <laughs> it, I would watch it when I would go to my grandfather's home in Kyoto from Hiroshima. It was on TV. He was the first person that actually explained to me that uh, the Gyoji, the referee, had a tanto with him. And yeah, that was like the only chance for me to watch sumo. And I need to be, I have to be honest, that I've never actually watched sumo like in, like right, done right in front of me. And I've never actually went to watch a game before. So, you know, the more I study about it, I found it really interesting to, to watch and learn about. So I hope that more Japanese, young Japanese people will be interested in sumo in the future. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you can look forward to more of the sumo related videos. And if you if you have anything that you'd like to know more about the sumo, or cu sumo culture, if you can tell me in the comments, I'll try to make a video about the, those things too. So, okay, thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimashita.